What's going on, everyone? Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with some day one mandatory minicamp news rumors nuggets coming out of the Valley. So we're going to check out everything stemming from the first day of minicamp. In fact, we're going to start things off with some unfortunate news. Uh, we're going to look at Russell Wilson and some other injury notes. But first, Tyree Cleveland. So Eric Delisle, who covers the team uh, for the team website, tweeting out, a bunch of teammates surrounded Tyree Cleveland before he was carted off the field with an apparent leg injury. You never want to see that. You never want to see the cart come on at any point in the, the, the season, but never a good sight to see. Then later on, Nathaniel Hackett, during his press conference, press conference like 20 minutes later, was asked about Tyree Cleveland if he had an update. And, Hack and Hackett says they're still evaluating the injury Hopeful it's not serious because he's done a hell of a job. That comes from George Stoa, who does a great job of covering the Broncos. And I guess it's his summer, too, because it's summer of George now. But off-season injuries just suck, right? There, there's never a good time for an injury. You know, it's not like an injury week 10 is better than an injury in June. But there is something that maybe stings a little bit more when you get injured, not even during a game. And you're a little bit of like, damn, it wasn't even for anything. It kind of feels like it's just practice in June. I don't know about you, but to me, that always feels like a bigger blow than an in-season injury. Now, Tyree Cleveland so far in his career has not maybe had the boost he's been looking for coming out of Florida. Just 10 targets and 6 receptions. But I will say this, he has had some valuable special teams um, cont uh, contributions, right? He's been good in the return game at times. He's provided a spark here and there, and there was a lot of optimism that in year number three, he would take a big boost and maybe get a little bit of pressure with Montrell Washington uh, on his tail for that kick return, punt return spot. Like the video, though, to show Tyree some support, you know, wish him a speedy recovery. Hit that thumbs up icon. You can also be an overachiever. Type 16 down below in the comment section if you'd like. I like to believe that stuff like this kind of gets back to the athlete and they feel the love from Broncos country. We all hope he can get back on the gridiron soon. We take a quick peek, though, at the depth chart here for the Broncos and where this leaves the team because it's not like they lost Cortland Sutton. They didn't lose a starting wide receiver necessarily or potentially, but still, you're going to have a battle now for wide receiver five, six, and seven. I mean, outside the top four, I wouldn't say Kendall Hinton is an absolute lock for the roster, but he's probably the closest after Montreal Washington. You're not cutting a rookie. Seth Williams, Travis Fulgram, Tyree Cleveland, all right there trying to make a case to be the fifth or sixth wide receiver to make this roster. Listen, I don't expect a wide receiver signing to stem from this injury because I just don't see Peyton picking up the phone and panicking going, we need to bring in Julio Jones or we need to call Will Fuller's agent. So if you're looking for connecting the dots of, oh, injured wide receiver, could the Broncos go out and sign a receiver? I don't really see that happening right now. I'm going to guess they're going to say in-house, maybe bring in just some body for some depth. But as for an actual notable name, no, I don't see that happening because of Cleveland's injury. All right, moving on, though. We're on to the Russell Wilson portion of today's show because Russ was asked a lot of questions during his press, and I thought this was an interesting one he shared. Russell Wilson says Greg Penner called him the night they agreed to purchase the Broncos, said he's really looking forward to working with them. Working with them, he's definitely working with them, but he's excited for that fat extension. I'm not talking FAT. I'm talking P-H-A-T, fat, fat contract extension, because I'm guessing Russ, he wants to be the highest paid quarterback in the National Football League, okay? Here's my projected contract for him. Just in the ballpark of, I'm guessing, five-year, $250 million. That sets him at $50 million, guaranteed 185. Now, the measuring stick would be Deshaun Watson, right? At $230 million, 100% guaranteed. I don't know if Peyton's going to give him that same treatment, but he's going to get a lot of it guaranteed. Now, my question for you guys is, would you make Russ the highest paid quarterback, okay? You didn't just trade everything away to get him and not have him be a part of your long-term plan. So I think he is on track to be the highest paid quarterback, the only reason why I don't think he wouldn't be is if he says, hey, I'll actually go more of the Tom Brady route. 
I make plenty of money elsewhere in endorsements. I don't need my contract money to provide for my family. Instead, I'll, I'll, I'll cut down and we can allocate some money elsewhere. Some injury news, though, here. We got some notable players who did not practice in the first day of minicamp. Randy Gregory still recovering from that shoulder surgery he had. We'll talk about him more in just a moment. Jerry Judy with that groin injury that popped up at the end of OTAs. Not sure what is wrong with Greg Dulcich, but he was hanging out on the sideline along with Eric Tomlinson, the tight end they signed from the Ravens with dealing with a foot injury. And the same goes for Seth Williams. Like Dulcich, not really sure what the issue is there, but he was not uh, participating as well. Randy Gregory, though. This was your big free agent signing, right? Russell Wilson was your big free agent move, but Gregory was your big signing. He had knee surgery back in January and then underwent shoulder surgery in March. Now, that was no surprise to the Broncos. That was always a part of who's going to get arthroscopic, you know, small procedure just to clean up his rotator cuff a little bit. But there are expectations he will be ready for week one, if not before then, during training camp. So just keep an eye on that. He was out there, no sling. He was participating in some limited stuff, kind of hanging out on his own, but he was not in the full 11-on-11, you know, team drills and whatnot. Coming up next, we're going to look at a battle that's brewing once again. Melvin Gordon versus Javante Williams running it back because Melvin Gordon did not show up to OTAs, but he's here at minicamp, and he talked about how excited he is to be battling for the number one job. He's not going to just roll over and let Javante take it over. But if you are looking for the number one off-season Broncos channel on YouTube, you have found the right place. Help us reach 9,000 subscribers. That's the next milestone here, and I'd greatly appreciate it. If you're looking for a spot to get free daily Broncos content, don't go any further. Just hit that big red button and subscribe. Back to Melvin Gordon, though. He reported to minicamp. And made his first off-season appearance after opting not to come to voluntary OTAs. And that's kind of been his MO for his career. He's always liked to do his own thing. Now, the reports are he looked awesome and fresh. Now, again, it's, you know, practice in June. Don't, don't take anything away from this and going, oh, my God, Melvin Gordon's going to rush for 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns. Entering his third season now in Denver, he's got high expectations for himself. In fact, here's what he said in his press conference. I told George Payton, or told George, I'm not going to lay down. I've always had my mindset that I've got to go get it. MG would go on to say, I know a lot of people want me to take the back, back seat. I'm not going to lay down. Me and Javante are going to do our thing. I've been sharing the ball since being in the league. Well, you definitely share with Austin Eckler when you made that bad decision to opt out, uh, to hold out. But anyway, let's go back to 2021, okay? When it was... Thunder and lightning, right? You had ball and chain Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams, who had very similar seasons. I will say this, Melvin Gordon outside of that 80-yard touchdown run in week one against the Giants, that was probably the peak of his season. He never really won a peak in week one. Meanwhile, Javante Williams, he started to peak as the season went along, right? For example, the Chiefs game when Gordon was out with the hip injury and Mel and Williams really took over. So both guys had great 2021 seasons, very similar seasons as well. Pretty much neck and neck, really hard to say who had necessarily a better year. But Williams definitely provided more highlights, that's for sure. But pick the starting running back for me. I think it's going to be Javante Williams. I don't think it's going to be as big as a battle as Melvin Gordon's saying it's going to be. But hey, he's a competitor. This is his livelihood. This is his job. He's not going to just walk in there and going, all right, yeah, I'm content to be the backup. No one does that in the National Football League. Put the number for the guy you think will be RB1. Moving on, though, we got some more news and rumors to cover. So let's talk about our new head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, because George tweeting out, Gordon says Hackett has changed the whole atmosphere. With the Broncos, guys are more excited to be here, he says. We'll explore that and more in just a second, but it is hot. OK, it is a very hot summer so far. So if you want to be repping your Broncos gear, but also be staying cool, right, in a nice T-shirt that's on sale, 25 percent off. Thanks to our friends at Fanatics. Get started today. Chatsports.com slash Broncos shirt. I put that link for everyone in the comments and the description. So just head on over there and get this awesome T-shirt on sale today. Going back to Hackett, though. So 
New head coach trying to bring a little flair, a little enthusiasm to practice. He brought back music, something Fangio was not uh, doing when he was at the helm. But he brought out the boxing gloves, okay? Just, uh, you know, be one, of the boys, well, be one of the boys, right? Be one of the guys, one of the dudes, bringing some gloves out, working on some ball security drills, seeing who's holding on to the rock type because that was definitely an issue for the running backs last season. Looking at you, 25, right? That was uh, the Eagles game. That really sucked. So bringing out the gloves, I love this, though, because Nathaniel Hackett has been very different in his first season as a head coach, right? From the Kahoot test to, I wouldn't say music is different, but it's different to what the organization has seen the last couple of years, the team has seen, bringing the gloves out, being a part of the drills, being a part of the practice, and that's what happens when you go young, right? I mean, this entire coaching staff is much younger than the previous couple of coaching staff. So this is what you get when you bring the cool young guys to practice. The cool young stepdad, he brings out the boxing gloves and he wants to hang out with the boys. He just wants to, I don't know, punch the balls out. All right, we got an interesting little uh, news story, rumor story to wrap up the show. Elliot Fry, a kicker, was one of five players who was a mini camp tryout. And mini camp tryouts don't mean too much there, right? Just a tryout. But I do think there may be something to take away from Elliot Fry being there because it makes you wonder if Brandon McManus doesn't have a good training camp in preseason or even maybe into the regular season. Is Elliot Fry maybe the first guy they're going to call and they want to see how he looks now? Because McManus last season wasn't bad, okay? If you just do the stats, 26 for 31, those aren't bad numbers, but all special teams sucked last season. And he just kind of got dragged down by association. He had some untimely misses, no doubt about it. But I don't think anyone walked away from the 2021 season going, if we had a different kicker, how different this season could have been. So I just wonder if this is a little push from the coaching staff, who, by the way, could save a little bit of money if they were to move on from McManus. But I, I think this is more a, a plan B if they have to get to that point. right? They don't want to discover in... August, September, October, October that McManus is just not the same player he once was. Let's start fresh with looking out for what what kickers are available. Why don't we get a head start on this now by bringing someone in, just seeing how he looks, and if we like him, we can always store him in the back of our minds. Final uh, just takeaway I had from reading stuff online and watching some videos and whatnot, the defense is shaping up nicely. Again, it's just June. There's not a whole lot out there right now. But Michael Ojemudia, for example, people have been singing the praises for this guy. Pat Sertan was talking very highly about the corner out of Iowa three seasons ago, or three years ago, who last year only played in two games after getting injured in the preseason, and then never just had a role on the team. I don't know what he did with Fangio, but Fangio just never found out or carved out a spot for him to really make a dent on this uh, 2021 season after what I thought was a good rookie year in 2020. I liked Ojemudia. I was hoping we'd see more of him last year, but it looks like we're going to get back to maybe 2020 types of reps for Michael and not 2021. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Matthew PD. I greatly appreciate everyone that watched today's show. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day, and I'll see you later with more Broncos news and rumors. Thank you.